So I'm a little late on getting started on my rough cut project, and I think I'm going to keep it simple and just sharpen some of these carbide inserts for my scrapers. I got a four pack of these diamond wheels. I wanted to get four inch ones, but I screwed up and got the six inch ones, but it was cheaper to get a four pack of the six inch ones than the four inch ones. I can cut these down later. It's not going to be a problem, but I need something to make these go around and around. So I think for this project, I'm going to build a little low speed carbide grinder. I've been kind of collecting little random bits for this. This is an incline motor from a treadmill. The big motors from treadmills are great for all sorts of projects, but we kind of forget there's another motor in there. This one I think says it's 34 RPMs, which is a little bit slower than I'd like. So there's a little gearbox inside here, and it looks like this last reduction is So it's 12 to 61, which puts this shaft at 172 RPMs. And then this shaft is about 417 RPMs. So that kind of puts me in a tough spot because I want this to be going somewhere in the ballpark at 2 to 300 RPMs. But I think I'm going to go with the slower one because this gear is metal. These are plastic, so it's going to be easier for me to fix this one onto a shaft. Now I just need to get a shaft out the front of this thing. What I'd like to do is put a bigger bearing in here so that that shaft, when it comes out and has the wheel mounted on it, is a little stronger. But there's not really enough material here to press that in. So I think what I want to do is kind of knock some of this stuff off and put the bearing in a plate on the front of it. And at the same time, I've got this it's a parallel port transfer switch. Never going to use that for anything else. I think that'll make a nice housing except this is actually a little too tall, so I'll need to notch this out a little. And then the plate that goes on the front will also be the plate that mounts it onto here. I don't see a good way to hold this on the mill because it's so thin without it shaking and chattering and just being a terrible experience all around. So we're not going to talk about these extra holes here other than to say, turns out this isn't actually symmetric. So I touched off and I have the cutter lined up right against the back jaw of the vise. Got this bolted onto that.
So a little bit of file work on the corners. It's a really nice fit now, except that's supposed to be on the inside. I wasn't paying attention. This is actually supposed to be the top. I cut this thing upside down. So I just need to flip this around to the other side. So using one of these original pins, got this thing indicated in. It occurred to me that if I use a plane bearing, I can get a lot bigger diameter shaft for the same space. So it's hitting right here, and I think that's making the drill bit deflect a little bit and wobble. I need to make a little bit more room for the flange on this. I found this old bolt that should make a pretty good shaft, but it had a wobbly center hole in it. So I'm just facing down to get rid of that. Since this is gonna be a really small diameter, I wanna keep the center hole as small as possible. So this little gear is hardened, which means I can't really put a set screw in there to attach it. So what I'm going to do is actually shrink fit this onto there, but I don't have a good way to really accurately measure the diameter of that. So what I'm going to do, because the end of this needs to be a little bit smaller than this will be, is just kind of... Just watch. So this needs to be just slightly bigger than what I just did there. You can probably just barely make out that little step on the end there so that it fits in there. Well, I think I had a little too much interference on my interference fit there. I managed to get it pressed on, but bend it in the process. I'm going to see if I can't straighten it out. I'm going to say that's within a thousandth, and let's see if it's going to work. That piece took some convincing. Hopefully I didn't bend it again. Does this all fit together? Aha. All right, we got some quick and pretty sketchy wiring just to test this out. Oh, did not like that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely shocked that there was something binding up in here. But, there's a little slot on the back of the shaft on the motor. So what I did was just took a slot screwdriver, 
I just kind of ran that thing in a little bit. Both ways. Both ways. And now when I plug it in, there you go. I dug around and found a drop of steel that's pretty close to the size I need. It's got a hole started in the middle. Just to make sure that's concentric, I'm going to drill it out, run a boring bar through, ream to final size. And unfortunately, this is one of those pieces that's exactly the wrong size where you can't cut it off and you just need to face down half of it to get rid of it. I kind of screwed up here and didn't leave enough sticking out of the jaws to turn this little spigot on the end. So, for these last couple cuts, I'm kind of ramping in and undercutting the outside. And I'll go back later and clean that up in another setup. I made up a little mandrel for these next few operations, especially because I'm going to be jumping back and forth to the mill. If you're wondering why this material is copper plated, so am I. Hold these discs on. I'm going to blatantly steal an idea from Stefan, which is to put some magnets in it and some pins. This gear from the treadmill incline motor has some little magnets in it from a Hall effect sensor. This is a quarter inch undersized reamer, 249 thousandths. So I completely eyeballed cutting that pin in half, and it was just a pin that I had. And that's damn near perfect. I'm going to do a little bit of super glue on these. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, really. So the obvious mistake with this was I want this pin as close to the center as I can so I have the maximum amount of the disc I can actually use. So I went back and moved it. This one, if I moved it, would interfere with that set screw. But this is really just a drive pin. There's a little boss in the middle that centers the disc. So I think one's going to be fine. To put the holes in these discs, I've just got them stacked up with some paper in between, try to protect the surfaces a little bit. I'm going to try to do all of them at once. I'm doing it on the drill press because I don't really want to get diamond dust on the lathe. I've got a half inch pin here. Now all those are lined up and I know that's centered. I'm using some WD-40 here to just try to blast away the grid as much as I can. Remember how I said I ordered the wrong size discs for this? Sometimes I do things with my lathe that are not real good for it. This one probably takes the cake though. So now as I'm working through different grits on this, I can just pop one off. Pop the next one on. 
as long as there's not too many chips on it. I think I need to deburr something here. So two of these fit properly. This one almost fits. It's a little tight on that center. Same with that one. So I don't think it was something I did. I think it's the discs. All right, moving on. So it occurred to me this motor is probably not really made for continuous use. And to keep it from overheating, I unceremoniously JB welded a little thermal switch on there and added a little fan, give it all the help it can get. But before I get that wired up, I want to make a little work rest here. And so for that, I've got this, which is the bottom of the circular saw that we found in the back of the Jeep in the last video. It just about fits, needs a little bit of The more I look at this, the less I like it, and the pivot's not in the right place. This little thing sticks down too far. Let's try something different. This was a piece I cast when I did my mini pallet. It didn't fill quite properly, so I set it aside. Figured it would be useful at some point. Now it is. got some transfer screws in this piece. I need to make sure that this is going to clear the head of the screw that holds this into the case. I'm doing this from the inside so I didn't have to take the motor off, just zip tied the wires out of the way. It actually needs to be in a little bit more because this doesn't sit flush there. Once on the outside it won't be a problem, but that at least gives me the height of them. For mocking this thing up, for some reason I thought I wanted these holes as low as possible. Turns out I want them as high as possible. So now I have, you know, I guess adjustable height on that. Maybe more ventilation. So I want this thing, I want this thing to sit far enough out that I can get these discs in and out. So probably there. Maybe a little higher than that. in there with a shoulder bolt. Should I put something like this to help hold that in place? Probably, but I'll wait until I get frustrated with it coming loose before I do that. final touch I've got these little rubber feet and I think these came off the treadmill as well. I'd like to use the entire treadmill. Why is this one bigger than those? Okay, managed to get that cut down. I guess it shouldn't be a surprise that this thing's really front heavy but we've got plenty of chunks of metal I can set on it. Got that set at five degrees. So one other thing I screwed up and I need to get a different switch because this one will reverse, but it doesn't turn off.
But I think for the purpose of this video, I'm going to call that done for now. Rough Cut was all about making a cutting tool. This one makes a lot of very small cuts, cuts very slowly. It's not going to remove a lot of material. Most of the shaping is going to be done on the bench grinder, but this is good for the final sharpening and polishing. Having played with this a little bit now, definitely need to switch out that switch. It also turns out that this motor does have an internal thermal protection. The one that I put in was unnecessary and it actually crapped out right away. There is a duty cycle to this, but for light work, it should be fine. Thinking about it, this, this shaft is actually just into the aluminum. I should go back and put a little bronze bushing in there. And I would like to do a little zero clearance insert on the table. So it still needs a little bit of work, but for now I think we'll just call it a rough cut of the tool.